Generation X Retirement Crisis, Millionaires Who Don't Feel Rich, and a Famous Artist Who's Hanging On. Today, I read an article on Yahoo Finance written by Gabriella Olia titled, Gen X is Headed for Retirement Crisis, Five Ways to Avoid Being Part of the Trend. According to the author, several studies have found that Gen X is less prepared for retirement than both baby boomers and millennials, with many members of this generation falling significantly short in their retirement savings. The author went on to reference entrepreneur.com and said, the lack of savings is an indicator that Gen X could be headed for a shocking retirement crisis. Well, my friends, I don't think a retirement crisis will be limited to Generation X. There are baby boomers right here in America in 2024 who are living in their cars or in tent cities because they have no other options. There are a lot of people who reached an age where they can no longer work, but they lacked the retirement savings to secure housing in their areas. For some, social security income is not enough. They don't have retirement savings to make up the difference for what is needed to sustain themselves in a house, apartment, trailer, or some other type of dwelling. I personally don't consider your car to be a dwelling, even though I have seen some people on YouTube deck out the back seat of their cars to accommodate living in them. I read some of the comments beneath this article and I found some of them to be interesting. One of the commenters said, because boomers refuse to leave the workplace and it seems corporate America just skipped over Generation X completely for millennials that are lost in the working world, but yeah, blame us. The next commenter said, Gen X is actually called the forgotten generation. And we are. I was also a middle child, and we were treated like middle children of generations. Just as we entered the workforce, pensions dried up, and we had no computer skills. No money means no savings, and nobody seemed to care. We can thank good old Ronald Reagan for our dismal lives. The trickle-down theory worked for the rich, but now the middle class has been squeezed into the lower class. The last comment that I'll share with you came from someone who said, as a Gen Xer, I see my friends and colleagues avoid retirement for keeping up with the Kardashians. As soon as a car is paid off, they need a new one. They buy the biggest home they can get a mortgage on. Most have zero to $10,000 saved. A few have around $50,000. Their income is going to fall off a cliff when they retire, and it's going to be a rude awakening. I've got myself set up where my income will stay the same once I bounce at 65. I fear my broke friends will be showing up at my door with suitcases in hand. Well, my friends, I think the retirement crisis in America could get a lot worse for people in the future. With a few exceptions, gone are the days of lifetime pensions, and some young people who are hoping to inherit wealth from their parents may be disappointed if those funds get used up for assisted living or nursing homes. These types of facilities are extremely expensive. So what are people to do? Well, the author of this article suggests putting your finances first before your children or adult parents who need help. The author also suggests prioritizing paying down debt, taking advantage of catch-up contributions after age 50 in a 401k or similar plan, having frank money conversations with your family, and seeking professional help. Here are my thoughts. I like the idea of putting your finances first, but Sometimes you do need to help your children or aging parents, but you can do your best to help both be as independent as possible. It's like that old saying, give a man a fish and he will be hungry again tomorrow, or you can teach him to fish and feed him for a lifetime. In my opinion, that is very good advice. In terms of taking advantage of catch-up contributions, I worry there are a lot of people 50 and older who aren't even putting in $23,000 per year pre-tax into a 401k or a similar plan. How in the world are they going to put $7,500 more into one of these plans? With how expensive life is in America in 2024, I worry that a lot of people are just barely scraping by and retirement is something they can't afford to fund. Many people will worry about that later. The problem is, later will be here before you know it. In terms of having frank money conversations with your family, this is easier said than done. Families can get messy, especially if it involves money. I do like the author's suggestion to seek professional help. 
I would simply add that it is important to complete a lot of due diligence before seeking the help from a professional. Make sure that person is putting your interests first and foremost, and make sure he or she doesn't want your account just for personal gain. Make sure it is someone with a solid track record who is well-trained and well-vetted. Even millionaires may not have the retirement of their dreams someday, since a million dollars just isn't as much money as it once was due to inflation. I read an article today on Yahoo Finance put out by Go Banking Rates and written by David Nadell titled, Middle Class Millionaires. Here's why 91% don't consider themselves rich. The author of this article referenced a company called Statista, who revealed more than 22.7 million Americans had a net worth of over $1 million in 2022. The author went on to say a million dollars doesn't go as far as it once did, and a recent study found it's affecting most millionaires' sense of self-wealth. According to research from Ameriprise Financial, 91% of U.S. millionaires don't classify themselves as upper-class rich. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I can understand why. If you have $1 million in a retirement account where you put the money in pre-tax and you apply the 4% rule, you are going to generate $40,000 per year in income before taxes. If you are retired and collecting that amount of money plus Social Security, you aren't going to have a lavish lifestyle. You are going to need to manage your money and stick to a budget. You aren't going to be out on a mega yacht, popping bottles of expensive champagne, and eating lobster and steak every night. You aren't going to be buying expensive new vehicles every couple of years. You may be able to sustain a decent middle-class lifestyle, but that's about it. You aren't going to be living the rich life like Thurston Howell III from Gilligan's Island. Now, there are some people here in America who are really rich. I read an article today on Yahoo.com put out by Business Insider and written by Geoff Weiss titled, Tech Workers Flush with Cash Are Turning Miami's Suburbs into the New Beverly Hills. The author of this article referenced data from Bloomberg that came from Zillow, which revealed seven out of the 10 most expensive neighborhoods in the U.S. are located in Florida. The priciest neighborhood in America is Gables Estates in Coral Gables, where a typical home costs $21.2 million. Well, my friends, a single-digit millionaire isn't going to be living there. Not only do you have to purchase the home, you have to pay the property taxes, insurance, utilities, and maintenance on it. The author went on to talk about how Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon are all working towards having office space in Florida and how Jeff Bezos has been buying expensive homes on Indian Creek Island off Miami. Well, my friends, it will be interesting to see what transpires in the decades to come in Florida, especially if global warming results in water levels rising, which could impact some oceanfront communities. I read some of the comments beneath this article. One commenter said, Florida is a much better option for the rich. You have miles of sunny beaches, no state income taxes, and a great governor who is using common sense to run the state. This is nothing like California or New York. The next commenter said, You better have a lot of money to live in Florida. Real estate is off the charts. Grocery prices are ridiculous. Car and home insurance is astronomical. True, there is no state tax, but everything else makes up for that. The last comment that I'll share with you came from someone who said, Wait until the next hurricane comes through and these buildings get destroyed. Wouldn't want to be their insurance company. What do you think about all this? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Now here's an interesting story about someone who you might think is making millions from music and could afford one of those mega mansions in Florida. This article was on yahoo.com and put out by In Touch, titled, Sheryl Crow's Financial Woes. It's the end of the music business as she once knew it. According to the author, Sheryl Crow claims she is hustling to make ends meet because no one buys records anymore. Apparently, her 2009 release called Threads moved a mere 40,000 copies as music fans flocked to streaming services like Spotify, which shell out just $4,800 for a million spins. She said, you cannot make money. And she said, it makes me sad and sick. I hate it because for me, when you sold records, you knew you had your people. 
Well, my friends, I am sorry to hear about Cheryl Crow's financial woes as she tries to make ends meet. I have to wonder what making ends meet means for someone famous like her. I'm sure it could be quite different than someone working at a restaurant washing dishes and taking the bus home at the end of a long shift in a hot kitchen. Times are changing in this new economic reality in America and around the world. With technology, change is always in flux. You need to learn to adapt quickly to remain viable in many industries. It will be very interesting to see how the music industry evolves in the future. Please keep in mind that everything in this video is for entertainment purposes only, and nothing in this video is financial advice or advice of any kind. If you need advice, seek advice from a qualified professional in good standing who puts your interests first and foremost. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel. Please also consider sharing this video with your friends. I want to extend a special thanks to everyone who has subscribed to this channel. I want to also thank all of my channel members. Check out some of the great books that I suggest you consider reading in the description below. I've included Amazon affiliate links to these books. As an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. Stay healthy and wealthy. I'll see everyone in the next video.